The psalm appointed for today are portions of Psalm 68. We will read it responsively by whole verse, beginning and ending with the refrain. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. Let them vanish like smoke when the wind drives it away. As the wax melts at the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. 
But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them be also be merry and joyful. Sing to God and sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides upon the heavens. Yahweh is his name. Rejoice before him. Father of orphans, defender of widows, God in his holy habitation. God gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners into freedom, but the rebels shall live in dry places. O God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the sky shook and the skies poured down at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a gracious rain, O God, upon your inheritance. You refreshed the land when it was weary. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. He rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel. His strength is in the skies. How wonderful is God in his holy places, the God of Israel, giving strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. First lesson, Acts 1, 6 through 14. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while he was going, and they were gazing upward towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same manner you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were, where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, the zealot, and Judas, son of James, all were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson, 1 Peter 4, 12 through 14 and 5, 6 through 11. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you as though it were something strange happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's suffering so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when the glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, the spirit which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Disciple yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters 
in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And then after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. A song of praise. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. The first verse of the Gospel hymn, He is King of Kings. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and through Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them. And they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. The second verse. He is King of kings. He is Lord of lords. Jesus Christ, the first and last. No man works like him. He is King of kings. He is Lord of lords. Jesus Christ, the first and last. But young when I began, no man works like him. But now my race is almost won, no man works like him. He is King of kings, he is Lord of lords. Jesus Christ, the first and last, no man works like him. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You've heard of the placebo effect in medicine, where doctors in a study gave, gave a control group, a group of patients, useless sugar pills, that tell them they are painkillers. 
And the patient's brains convince them that they're the real deal, and they begin to feel better. Well, the truth is that the placebo effect isn't just for medicine anymore. Indeed, every day we're encountering, encountering things that convince our brains that they should work, but actually don't. For example, that closed door button in the elevator isn't actually there for you to push. It only works when a key is inserted in the elevator panel by a firefighter or maintenance worker. Push it all you want, but the door will close when it's programmed to do so every time. Ever since the Americans with Disabilities Act, the doors wait a little longer to close no matter what. Manufacturers could put a sign on the button saying something to that effect, but that's a hassle. It's just easier to let the public believe they are the masters of elevator control. That thermostat on your office wall is very likely a dummy that actually controls nothing. Think about it. What would it be like, what would be the cost of heating and cooling if every individual in the building had access to the real thermostat? That dummy thermostat is there to give workers the illusion of control. The thinking being that if you believe you've set the thermostat higher, you'll actually feel warmer, even though the real temperature remains the same. The walk button on the street corner might actually work, but not everywhere. In New York City, for example, all the buttons have been deactivated because they've been replaced by automatic timers. That doesn't stop people from continuing to jab at them incessantly in hopes of beating the traffic. The bottom line is that there are a lot of things that look like they should work but really don't. Their purpose is to get us believing that we're in control while actually something or someone else is, someone who has a bigger picture in mind than our own personal need to get something done. While it's sometimes done under dubious circumstances, often we need to be managed this way for our own ultimate good and the good of others. Well, at the end of Luke's gospel, the disciples are ready to push buttons. The risen Jesus seems to recognize that his disciples might be feeling that they're now ready to start pushing buttons and take over his mission. All through the gospels, we see the disciples believing that they have it all figured out, jostling with each other for position, vying for who would be the greatest, and thinking that being associated with Jesus would get them recognized by others. They had lived with Jesus for three years. They saw the miracles, heard the teachings, and a few even saw him transfigured before them. They had watched him die on a cross, and yet now there he was standing before them. They'd been to the ultimate school of discipleship, and they had their practical undergraduate degrees in Michigan. Mission. They're ready to launch. Everything is lined up for a mission that should work. And yet Jesus knows their sense of control, the way they know how to walk, their spiritual thermostats, and their analog worldviews just aren't ready yet. He reviews with them how his death and resurrection is the climax of the whole biblical story and opens their minds to understand the scriptures. He tells them that, yes, they will be heading out on a mission to proclaim repentance and forgiveness of sins to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. They know now how it all works, and yet there's still one thing missing. You are witnesses of these things, says Jesus, and see I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Heading straight into the mission field should work, but it won't. Not unless you wait for the power from on high. Interestingly, many of the dummy devices out there on the street are designed to satisfy our sense of always being in a hurry by giving us the illusion of control. Jesus, on the other hand, tells his disciples right up front that being in a hurry will get them nowhere. The only power you have, the only control you will ever exert comes from being empowered and controlled by the Holy Spirit. That's the only way the mission is going to work. The disciples had the undergrad diploma, but they need the master's degree. A lot of Christians move through life believing that there are shortcuts to faith and success in mission. Churches are always trying to push the right buttons by mashing away repeatedly at things like marketing campaigns and mission strategies and four principles for this and five steps for that. But everything we try will be inert and useless unless it's invested with the power of the Spirit. Mission isn't about being in a hurry or about being efficient and in control. It's about waiting in prayer and fasting, solitude and silence, worship and studying the scriptures. That's the only way discipleship works. It's about God's plan, God's timing, God's method, God's mission. Everything else is a programmatic placebo. Lord, we are in awe of the beauty of the ascension and the promise of the Holy Spirit. Remind us, 
always that we are powerless without the leading of the Holy Spirit and your love. Amen. Mechanical, you are God. You are God, we praise you. You are Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. The Apostles' Creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The prayers, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The suffrages, A, show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let, Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The collect of the day. O God, the King of glory, who has exalted, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to, the, uh, and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the birthdays of Mike Trippi, Tom Magyar, and Nancy Sikor, 
and the anniversaries of everyone who's celebrating this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Vinny, Maisie, and their sons. Richard and Mary, Art and Patsy, Tom and Joanna, Mary and Nancy, Bob and Fran, Christian and Giselle, Jane, Amy, Nancy, Father Jim, Liana, Teresa, Myron, Margaret, Sally, Marie, Dan, Joe, Jennifer, Emmanuel, Lucy, Susan, Elizabeth, Molly, Lauren, Cynthia, Denali, Wyatt, Alex, Jesse, Richie, Dale, Anne, Billy, Nick, Julie, Kathy, Steve, Judy, Betty, John, Karen, William, Marie, and Baby. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those serving in the armed forces and their families, especially Jason Thompson, David Marcinski, Mark Ditchman, Kyle Lewis, Paul Workman, Becca Voigt, C.J. Voigt, Jack Rolfe, Anthony Wurst, and Patrick Renwick. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we, we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We'll pray together the prayer for in time of great sickness and mortality. O most, most mighty and merciful God, God, in this time of grievous sickness, we flee unto thee for succor. Deliver us, we beseech thee, from our peril. Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick. Prosper the means made use of for their cure. And grant that perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts unto that heavenly wisdom which leadeth to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us, to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we hope give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives. By giving up ourselves so, to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us, in his, made us his children through the resurrection of the Son, his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 494.
us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. A couple of announcements. Uh, remember our Zoom coffee hour, uh, 11 o'clock on Sunday. And the, uh, the uh, link to that is found on our St. Bart, Bart web page. Next Sunday, Pentecost Sunday, we're going to do a virtual Eucharist. It'll be the first time we've done that since March. So I'm looking forward to that, and we're going to be very careful in doing our social distancing and wearing gloves and masks and all that. So look forward to that. God bless you. Have a good week. Amen.